How many of you are concerned about GMOs? Raise your hand. How many of you are completely unconcerned about GMOs? Raise your hand. I'm looking for the Monsanto plant in the audience. Here's it going like this. <laughs> um, how many of you are farmers? All right, let's hear it for the farmers. <laughs> and gardeners? How many are gardeners? Wow. How many people eat? <laughs> Nearly everyone. I want you to rate yourself from 1 to 100 how vigilant you've been in avoiding GMOs. Now, this is going to be the whole package. Going out to eat, going over to someone else's house, at a supermarket, everything, okay? One is not vigilant, 100 is high vigilance, all right? So, most people in the United States on a scale of 1 to 100 are about minus 7. And so, I'm, I'm expecting that most of you, even though you say you're concerned about GMOs, I'm expecting that most of you actually are in the lowest category with call 1 to 20. So how many are 1 to 20? Raise your hand boldly. Raise your hand. Look around and see. It seems to be the majority. Now 20 to 40. Raise your hand. 40 to 60. 60 to 80. 80 to 100. All right, so 1 to 20 was, the, was the, definitely the most popular category. This is a pretest. We're going to test you afterwards to see how vigilant you plan to be avoiding GMOs after you've heard the speakers today. Now, what's a GMO? GMO, genetically modified organism. You take a gene from one species, you put the gene into a new species, you add a trait. So they've taken genes from spiders and put them into goats. And if you don't know why, you'll never guess why. They're trying to milk the goat to get spider web protein to make bulletproof vests. They've put jellyfish genes into kittens so they glow in the dark. They've given pigs cow hides. And they've put bacterial and virus genes into our food. So if you want to create a corn plant, for example, that's a pesticide that kills insects, you take a gene from soil bacteria that kills insects, and you put, make millions of copies, put it into a gun, shoot the gun into a plate of billions of cells, and then clone the cells into a plant, and now every single cell of that corn plant has a little spray bottle that creates a toxin that kills insects. This is genetic engineering. It's a lot of things, but it's not sex. <laughs> it's not sexual reproduction, which has been the way for millennia for producing offspring. Now, the biotech industry says, oh, it's a more precise technology than sexual reproduction. That is false. By the time you've created a GM crop, the DNA is 2 to 4% different. Hundreds or thousands of mutations up and down the DNA. Up to 5% of the naturally functioning genes can change their levels of expression. Genes can be deleted, permanently turned on, permanently turned off. So in Monsanto's corn that produces a toxic insecticide, there's not only the insecticide, but 43 different proteins have either been dramatically increased or decreased or appear where no protein had been there before, like gamazine, which you've probably never heard of. It's a known allergen. It's not in corn, but it's in Monsanto's BT corn because the process of genetic engineering creates massive collateral damage in the DNA. So the process itself is primitive. It causes huge unpredicted side effects. And you'd think that these side effects were carefully evaluated before the crops go on the market. Enter the FDA. For those of you who believe that the FDA is very careful and rigorous and meticulous at protecting ourselves, at protecting our country from the dangers of food and drugs. Well, I'm sorry to say it's not true, especially in the case of genetically engineered foods. There are many very good scientists at the FDA. And if you look at thousands of documents made public from a lawsuit in 1991 and 92, they expressed grave concern 
over genetically modified foods. They described how the foods might create allergens that would be very difficult to detect before being put on the food supply. They talked about creating new toxins or higher levels of existing toxins or concentrating toxins from the environment or nutritional problems or new diseases that would resist death, resist cure by antibiotics. They had urged their superiors over and over again to require studies. But the White House, under George Bush I, had told the FDA, promote biotechnology. So the FDA created a new position for Michael Taylor, Monsanto's former attorney. Monsanto was the big biotech company. And as the person in charge of policy, he oversaw, he presided over the GMO policy. And when it came out, it did not mention that the overwhelming consensus among the FDA scientists with the GMOs were quite different and dangerous, which we now know to be true. Instead, it claimed falsely that the agency is not aware of any information showing that GMOs are significantly different, and therefore absolutely no safety testing was necessary. No labeling was necessary. Companies like Monsanto, who told us PCBs, Agent Orange, and DDT were safe, could put GMOs on the market without telling us and without telling the FDA. It was not regulation, it was abdication. Now, nearly 20 years later, the animal feeding studies, according to the American Academy of Environmental Medicine, the animal feeding studies on GMOs show reproductive problems, immune system problems, accelerated aging, organ damage, gastrointestinal problems, dysfunctional regulation of cholesterol and insulin, among others. They say, even though there's very few studies, and only a handful, one published feeding study on humans, they say we don't need to wait for more studies. The animal feeding studies show causality, and therefore, Every doctor in America should prescribe non-GMO diets to all of their patients. Now, what can go wrong with GMOs? You're going to hear from two doctors tonight, and from an expert on the agricultural side, environmental side. You're going to hear some of the specific problems that have occurred in the studies. I'm going to just describe to you categorically things that can go wrong in terms of five categories. One we've already discussed. The process itself is dangerous. So you can put a vitamin A, a vitamin B, you can put a whole set of good stuff in the genes, but at the end of the day, you might also create a poison. Two, you put a gene in because genes produce proteins, and proteins produce traits. Those proteins that they intend to put in the food may be dangerous. Two major categories. You have the pesticide producers, it kills, it kills insects, it breaks open the stomach of insects and kills them. And the most common one are herbicide tolerant crops, like Roundup Ready soybeans, where you can spray the field with Roundup herbicide, killing all the other plant biodiversity, the weeds, but not the Roundup Ready soybeans. And that's the main reason they genetically modify. The genes that they put into those create proteins, which may be a problem, but we'll hear about that. Three, they assume that those proteins and those genes will function the same in the new organism. Turns out that's a false assumption. A harmless protein can become deadly just by switching the way it expresses. Four, you can end up with much more herbicide in these herbicide-tolerant crops because it goes on the crop, it goes into the crop, and it gets accumulated in the food portion. And we'll hear tonight about some of the dangers of specifically Roundup and its active ingredient glyphosate. And five, the genes that they insert into the soybean and the corn and the cotton and the canola and the sugar beet and the alfalfa, Hawaiian papaya, zucchini, crookneck squash, that's the, eight, that's the nine genetically modified food crops. In some cases, the genes may transfer into the DNA of bacteria living inside our intestines and may continue to function. So, five categories. The process itself, the protein produced by the inserted gene, 
the fact that you can't control it once it's there and it might change, the extra herbicide, and gene transfer. And there's evidence of all five problems going wrong. So, you're going to hear now some specific details and what may be going wrong in the U.S. population since GMOs were introduced in 1996. Rate yourself from 1 to 100 how vigilant you'll be next week at avoiding GMOs. <laughs> this is the post-test, but I want to add a little spice, okay? Animal feeding studies with rodents, rats, hamsters, and mice fed Roundup-ready soybeans. When the mothers were fed Roundup-ready soy, more than 50% of their babies died within three weeks, compared to a 10% death rate. The babies were also smaller and could not reproduce. Hamsters fed GM soy by the third generation, most lost the ability to have babies, also died at four or five times the rate, some had hair growing in their mouths. Rats fed genetically modified soy, the males, the testicles changed from pink to blue, females changed the uterus and ovaries, dramatic changes. Mice also changes in the young sperm cells, and the DNA function differently in the embryo offspring. The only human feeding study ever published on GMOs was done on Roundup Ready soybeans. And they found that the gene inserted into soy transferred into the DNA of the bacteria living inside our intestines. Most of it did. And it appeared to be continuing to function. This means long after we stop eating GMOs, we may continuously have these foreign proteins produced inside of us. Now, the Roundup Ready protein has properties of a dust mite allergen. So if you're allergic to dust, you might be allergic to Roundup Ready soy. We don't know. No one's done the studies. However, no one has also done the studies to see if eating a corn chip that's made from BT toxin producing corn might also have that gene that produces that toxin end up in the DNA of your gut bacteria and continuing to produce BT toxin, turning your intestinal flora into living pesticide factories. And that might explain why 93% of the pregnant women tested in Canada had BT in their blood. Imagine not just your children, but your great, 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 great grandchildren knocking on your door in the middle of the night, waking you up, saying, what did you do when you found out? And I hope that you'll join us and end the genetic engineering of the food supply. Thank you very much.